So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the open source education track in DEF CONF uh, CZ 2022. Uh, let me welcome here and introduce our speakers uh, who will be talking about the power of community. Um, as a very first person who I would like to introduce is Anishka Miller, uh, who is a project, even community coordinator in Digital Chesco. Uh, but she's also very active in Czech Python community. So she's organizing a lot of local events and meetups. So welcome, Anishka. It is also a pleasure to introduce uh, the second speaker, uh, Karolina Surma. Uh, who is also active member of Pi Ladies. If you do not know what is the Pi Ladies about, so Pi Ladies is a community of women um, who are actually programming uh, in Python. And the main goal of this initiative is uh, to bring more women into the IT field. And it seems it really worked uh, because Carolina, thanks to the Pi Ladies, uh, she changed her job field, and now she's working as a software engineer at Red Hat. So welcome, uh, Catalina, as well. Uh, before I will hand it over to Catalina, let me just mention uh, that this presentation will last 20 minutes. Uh, we will have five minutes for the Q&A section. Uh, so feel free to contact or to interact uh, the speakers in a chat or use the Q&A section. So enjoy it, and now we'll hand, hand over to uh, Carolina. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you, DEFCON, for having us here. Uh, I just heard a part of uh, the welcome talk, and I was very glad to observe uh, the same community spirit we actually want to talk here today. Um, so let me briefly set the scope of uh, the talk. We are here as Pi Ladies, which is an educational and diversity in mind community. Um, but we'd like to focus more on what we think and what we believe is universal for any long-term striving community project. We will not talk about who we are or what we do. If you're interested uh, to get to know us better, we're always happy to have a conversation about it. Reach, feel free to reach us after the talk. Uh, we've both been with the uh, with Pi Ladies for a long time now, and we learned a lot during uh, this time. Uh, and so we asked our friends in the community, uh, what do they think that they gained during their stay, their activity uh, at Pi Ladies? Uh, we learned a lot from their responses as well. So we want to share that insight with you. Uh, now I'll hand it over to Aneshka. So thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, Carolina will be later talking uh, about uh, what we call a skills playground or uh, how the why the subtitle of this talk is a mutual help to grow. Uh, but for the beginning, uh, I'd like to share with you some preconditions for all this to happen and uh, how we got to that stage, actually. Um, so I will briefly touch uh, the, the differences between motivation to join the community and uh, how it differs from the motivation to stay active in it and how these changes uh, in the motivation uh, affected uh, our activities over the years of existence of uh, Pilates Group in Brno. So for the beginning, uh, I'm going to share with you the motivations to join basically any educational community uh, without knowing anything about it except the main topic of the community. Uh, and those uh, things are quite obvious. Uh, for those uh, who are less experienced, uh, usually they join uh, because they want to learn about the topic of the community. And for those who are more experienced in the field, they want to share their knowledge. Uh, for both of these groups, uh, they usually want to try something new. They, they uh, want to get some new impulses in their life, uh, or they want to grow their network within the given field, or in general, utilize their free time with uh, some meaningful activities. Uh, all these things uh, may be easily fulfilled just by joining the group. Uh, but for some of those people, it may change when they join the community and when they learn what more it has to offer. And here, 
I'll be more specific for PyLadies Brno Group uh, because as Carolina mentioned, uh, we ask uh, our colleagues to uh, share their thoughts with us uh, and it's also based on our both uh, experience of, of us both. Uh, so I will start with those who came to teach with the more experienced ones. Uh, and they shared with us two important findings which change won't change for them when they joined the community uh, and they start to do things in there. The first finding was that even though they came to share their knowledge and to teach others, uh, by learning they're actually, uh, by teaching, sorry, they are actually learning a lot uh, because there's a difference uh, between using something you know on a daily basis and work with it and explaining it to someone uh, who has no knowledge about a given subject, or in our case, usually no technical background at all. Uh, those, let's call them newbies, uh, we did a pick from like totally different angles. They are asking unexpected questions and, and have really unorthodox approach where they are, because they are untouched from uh, the, the technical background. Uh, so for the experienced ones, uh, it opens new horizons and, and opens new ways how to view the subject. Uh, so with that, uh, they want to apply it for other things they know. So they want to uh, try new ways of teaching or, or teach something else, get these new horizons uh, for, uh, for new topics. Uh, and there is a second finding which is no less important than the first one, and it's that uh, when you join the community, it's not only about growing the network, but it's actually uh, about building the relationships and that getting to know the people uh, can bring more value and joy uh, than, than just teaching. Uh, this also applies for the newbies, for those uh, who came to learn, uh, because when they join the community, uh, they find out that it's not just a random programming course, but there's this sense of belonging. Because uh, with the other, let's call them classmates, they're sharing uh, the same starting line and we really encourage the interactions among the community members. Uh, so they are creating this support net, they, they are helping each other grow. And when they get to know the rest of the community, the organizers, the coaches, the lecturers, uh, they found out that even the experienced people were on the similar starting point as well some time ago. So here comes the realization of I, I can do this uh, and that through the community activities they can get more experience, uh, they, they want to give back to the community, help other newbies and, and they want to stay to explore uh, the opportunities and what more the community uh, can bring to them. Uh, but we didn't have this mindset since the beginning. Uh, it, it was actually quite a journey to get to uh, to this point, uh, because uh, at the beginning, uh, and for PyLadies Brno Group, it's almost 10 years ago, uh, we started with really focus on getting more women to IT, uh, support the diversity, uh, getting more and more girls involved in, in our activities. So uh, we were repeating uh, the courses for beginners again and again, uh, and perceived from the outside, uh, there was almost an equal sign between PI ladies and, and programming courses for beginners, for ladies only, like almost no difference uh, seeing from the public. Uh, it started to change slowly because uh, more and more people from the Czech Python community uh, got involved uh, with PI ladies and uh, Czech Python community is, is really active one and they are really supportive and awesome and, and they brought us uh, the spirit of real community and, and showed us what uh, the community can really be. And that if we want to grow, it, it doesn't mean uh, just adding more and more people who won't stay with us because they just joined for this one time game to learn programming uh, in Python. Uh, and getting more people is not the same as growing the community and, and we need to nurture it as well. Uh, we need to give them the reason to stay and address the changes in motivation. Uh, 
so we started to add more advanced activities and a bigger variety of activities uh, to, to address the needs uh, of both the experienced er on, uh, and the less experienced people in the community. Uh, and it seemed to be the right way to success. Uh, at that time, Bruno Group uh, grew really extensively. Uh, we had a lot of people coming back uh, and, and we saw this progress of uh, uh, the newbies uh, becoming organizers or coaches or even lecturers and we're on cloud nine it was awesome and and uh, we really felt that the community uh, is is growing uh, but then COVID hit and uh, COVID showed us uh, how important it is for our community uh, to be together in real life. Uh, there was this part of, of building relationships at the, and that uh, the human interaction and networking is really a key part uh, of, of uh, our community. And uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to, to replicate uh, this in an online environment and uh, without uh, this presence, uh, we were just getting back to being just another programming course, which we didn't want. So right now, we're in kind of like restart phase. Uh, we want to focus more uh, on those who are already involved with us somehow. Um, our strong motivation now is to really build a community. And uh, we know we need to uh, build a strong foundations before getting back uh, to the activities for newcomers. So uh, right now, uh, hopefully the COVID will be gone soon and, and we're starting again with like real community building. So this was a journey of our community and, and uh, now uh, Carolina will tell you more about how can people benefit from uh, being a part of an educational community such as uh, Palladies in Brno are. <clears throat> Thank you, Aneška. Uh, so as Aneška just said, we want people to stay with us. Um, and uh, the way to do it uh, is to enable them to grow as they uh, find new areas for their development uh, so that they don't burn out doing always the same tasks. You know, when you organize the meetup for the 15th time, there's really nothing new to it. Uh, and that's what we call the skills playground. Uh, let's be clear, it's nothing uh, we invented, but we like to think about our activities this way and we would like to propose it to you as a method of looking at your own community activities. Uh, because, you know, there are plenty of skills uh, outside of the main community focus to grab. Uh, let's take a look at uh, how this works in our environment. Uh, come to learn programming and become an organizer. This involves a great deal of project management. You'll learn time management and improve handling with many parties at once. And once you know how to handle timelines, secure the people to the meetups, uh, communicate with the attendees, you can switch to some other role and maybe you're curious about marketing and uh, how to um, leverage the way the um, community is perceived outside. Or maybe you're more interested in the technical field and would like to become a web administration administrator uh, and make sure our online resources are updated on time. Um, also, you can move towards more expert role and learn how to share your knowledge with the people who are even more new to the topic than you are. Uh, then you can train a, another, a new set of skills like uh, how to plan a session or uh, contents, maybe some technicalities like uh, how to stream your session and so on. Uh, let's then define some skills playground features. Uh, it's all about creating an environment where there are tasks or areas uh, and everyone is welcome to take their piece of pie uh, or come up with the new ideas uh, they want to implement. You know, it's also about bringing new things to the community. Uh, it resembles a real world at a small scale. You train real life skills. Um, in, a, uh, in an environment where it's not a big deal, so you don't get the $1 million budget project, but a one semester uh, programming course. Uh, that's enough to get a flavor of what it really means. Um, another thing is psychological safety. Uh, in case it works, whatever you're trying to do is great for the community and for yourself. Everyone is benefiting. 
And in case it doesn't work, you can evaluate it, make it better, and try, try it again. Uh, or you can just stop doing whatever didn't work. Um, you're not penalized in any way for any kind of failure or what you perceive as a failure. Uh, it's important to remember that every experiment that didn't work as expected uh, adds up to your hard earned expertise in the topic. And that's an experience you will bring, you will get and bring you with yourself uh, to your further adventures. And anytime you will get uh, to deal with a similar situation, you will already know it. Uh, in the skills playground, you get some community support. Anushka was talking about it, so I will not uh, go into it, but it's super important. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a volunteer work. It's something we do in the free time after work. So just make it do whatever makes you happy. What's joyous for you? What, what brings you joy? Um, by trying out the tasks you're curious about, uh, you gain a lot. Um, the first thing is the insight about who you are and what's actually fulfilling for you. Many people have the idea, this uh, random ideas. Oh, it would be so cool for me if I could do this or that. Community work can actually uh, let you train it and you know do some reality check uh, whether the activity is something for you or not. Uh, this will bring the confidence, self-confidence boost. Uh, what Anushka said, I can do it, I can organize, I can help, I can teach. That's a great feeling. Uh, this is related also to getting used to being out of your comfort zone. Uh, which is a great skill to your further life as well. This all together, knowing your uh, strong sides, knowing your weaknesses, meeting people who can act as, your, as the role models, it all can lead you to uh, redefining uh, your career path for yourself. And it has happened to both Aneshka and me, although each of us has chosen different direction, Mm, we agree that without the community work, uh, we wouldn't do it. Uh, we wouldn't have thought uh, it, it's possible for us. Um, and within time, you may have created a personal brand for yourself uh, without any actual marketing activities. You can be visible through your work in the wider community. And this can also bring you some credit and appreciation in your current workplace. What started as a hobby doesn't have to end like one. So once you know a certain area, you can choose to grow in a new one and prevent a burnout from routine and boredom. Uh, for the community work, you will become proficient in all kinds of communication, written, spoken, formal, informal, business talk. Uh, it can send you to explore even wilder paths like preparing and giving a conference talk. <laughs> and as for less expected gains, uh, when collaborating with volunteers, um, you will realize that you can't control everything because life happens and uh, you, know, you shouldn't take it all personally. That's what I call the skill of letting it go. And I think it's a great skill to train uh, for anyone with uh, uh, some micromanagement traits. As women in tech still draw some negative publicity, we have developed a very hard skin against unconstructive feedback. Uh, that's also a gain for life. And this is related to another issue. Sometimes, not very often, unpleasant situations happen. Uh, the people responsible for the community must handle them, and uh, that's an opportunity to train crisis communication skills. And that's a skill we, we adapted as well. Uh, that's where you become also mindful about the language you use and the way you act if you really care about the well-being of the people meeting in the community field. And for the completely different area, Thanks uh, to the decisions made by the people that started the community, our websites are approachable by the newbies. They can pretty quickly learn how to edit the web and get familiar with open source uh, collaboration uh, model. Uh, for people uh, <clears throat> who stay longer with us, Git and GitHub uh, are no secret. Um, as a result, people know how to use their tooling, uh, which becomes invisible. And there's more to it. In the, uh, in the beginnings, editing HTML, YAML files, uh, YAML files or Jinja templates, uh, committing it to Git and pushing it to remote branch is rather scary. Uh, with the rising experience and the community support um, in embracing the new skills, 
people get rid of the fear of technicalities and become tech savvy. You know, nothing new will uh, surprise them as much as the, those, those beginnings. So if you want to teach open source, that's the way to do it. In short, what are the parts of what we believe will make us better community? Uh, probing once in a while. Who is your target? Uh, does it stay the same or does it change? Maybe you have developed a new internal customers for yourself. This also means evolving. Time goes by, people change. Maybe the format from the beginnings is not the optimal one anymore. Uh, so be sensitive to people's feedback and be mindful about your target group. Um, we want to attract beginners, so our applications must be approachable by the beginners. Uh, it's good to have a, a big variety of tasks and roles, uh, which scope beyond the core functionality. Uh, it's also great to leave space for new ideas. Mm, and here a side note, the more flat the structure is, the better. Our organizers are the attendees and the, they are coaches and they learn how to teach and you know we are mixing it up and we believe this is the best way to actually work. Uh, lastly, just don't be afraid to experiment. Thank you very much for your attention and this is time for questions. Yes, we actually have one question in the Q&A section. So uh, do participants of PyLadies trainings learn about open source contribution? Kayo, Aneshko? Uh, yes, uh, yes and no, in a way. Uh, so of course, if you want to uh, stay with our community, you will have to edit our website or will not, you will have to, but you can do it. Uh, we have everything hosted and uh, the source code is uh, on GitHub, so any additions that are made will, be, will go through the open source model. Uh, the beginner's course has had uh, Git and GitHub uh, sessions, lessons in it, but it doesn't have any more. We moved towards uh, organizing one-day workshops uh, on collaboration. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely possible. And when people come with the idea, oh, we would like to learn Git, then this, we are more than happy to organize such an event. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carolina. Anishko, is there anything you would like to add? No, I mean, uh, maybe one thing that uh, we believe uh, it's, a, it's a crucial part, part to have this uh, in our uh, portfolio of activities, but uh, the program for beginners uh, is even without it really complex. So uh, as Karina mentioned, we put it out uh, and uh, uh, decided to have a whole day workshop focused on this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So another question, to gain the soft skills and management skills, is it always uh, through the Python development or is there a place to do it without programming? Yeah, that's maybe more for me. Uh, I'm not a programmer. Uh, I actually attended uh, the, the beginner's course, uh, but uh, I saw it mostly as an uh, entering path for me to the PyLadies community. And I learned many of those things which Corinna mentioned just by organizing. Uh, and uh, I'm doing also some kind of PR activities uh, for PyLadies and uh, I'm calling myself PyLadies Ambassador because I'm uh, speaking at conferences and I'm, I'm usually the one who's opening uh, the courses at the beginning. So yeah, it's, 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 it's really possible without programming. I, I don't call myself a programmer. I'm event organizer, I'm, I'm a community supporter, but not a programmer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anishko. Uh, then we have another question. Uh, how can I join the community? Is this for everyone around the world? Yeah, Palladies are the worldwide community. And if you want to uh, get involved into uh, Python, uh, Python meetups, and Palladies in Czech Republic are quite different because we organize the courses. But normally, those are meetups for the Python programmers. Uh, so just uh, you know, uh, Google for Palladies.com or just go directly to Palladies.com and uh, try to find the locations suitable for you. And also, uh, I'd like to bounce back for a moment for to, to this soft skills and management skills training. 
it's not typical to our community. I believe that in any community that doesn't have a, a strong uh, structure, who's the organizer and, who, and who's the user, uh, those skills can be acquired. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Carolina. So as we are slowly approaching to the end of our session, so do you have anything like in the end, any like a final idea you would like to share? Uh, I, I don't know, we shall slack. Uh, we would really like to uh, get through the COVID phase and, and to restart uh, once, uh, once it's over. So we shall slack. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Anishko, uh, Carolino, thank you very much. You were great speakers. And for those of you who would like to talk to the speakers, so you can move to the work adventure uh, platform where you can talk. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.